How many shows would you tape a day? Five a week, two on Thursday. I can tell you this, 90 minute show is a long time. And a second one, 20 minutes later on Thursday, so you can have a three day weekend. In the middle of the last 20 so minutes of the second one, you could barely come up with your name, certainly not the name of the person you're talking to. On one of them, I called the guest by the wrong name and I was too tired to care. <laughs> It was the late Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> but you're a good audience. But sometimes you would have, say, a guest who was maybe a little reluctant to talk. Um, yeah. I remember, like, George Harrison, um, you know, he said, well, you know, I just don't have a lot to say. You know, for and that was at the beginning of the interview. <laughs> yeah, and it's, yeah. <laughs> and you, look at you watching, you only got 80 <laughs> minutes to go. Uh, the great thing about having a 90-minute show with certain people who are interesting is they don't get so until they've been out there and relaxed for 10 or 15. And then he got really interesting. Now, you're doing a play. But yeah, I'm in a play at the Abingdon Theater about Lillian Hellman and Mary McCarthy, the notorious feud between these two literary giants, a touch past their prime when it happened, that I caused on my show and the case went on for five years until the old bag, uh, until Miss Hellman died. So this uh, feud between Mary McCarthy and Lillian Hellman had got, had, you know, was in the makings for years. I it, it but might it have, came, yeah. But it kind of came to a head on your show because, because Mary McCarthy. I think you're onto a good reason there because no one, nobody knows for certain. But the story I've told all these years is. I said to Mary, are there some overrated writers? And she said, yes, several, Steinbeck, Pearl Buck, and somebody like Lillian Hellman, such a dishonest writer that even her thes and ands are lies. Her thes and ands and thes. Um, and Lillian Hel Hellman is home watching us. Yes, <laughs> for the perfect She's, plot point. Yes. yes. <laughs> Hellman is home watching this, calls her lawyer, I learned the next day, uh, the phone rang, why didn't you defend me? And I said, well, Lily and I, she called me the she next She called morning. you, and yeah. yeah. I, I had had dinner at her apartment a couple times and other places. And uh, I said, Lily, I never thought of you as anyone who <laughs> needed defending. You mm. did it pretty well herself. Uh, the part I had forgotten was, in my guest notes, which you probably get to, um, it said, she would like to talk about a young, talented writer she would like to see get some attention. On the air, I decided to be subtle and say, are there overpraised, underpraised writers, writers? She didn't catch it as the... So you were trying yeah. to get yeah. to the writer that she wanted it and... Yeah, so I did it again. Right. I said, well, <laughs> who are some writers that you think are... And she went right for Hellman's throat instead of anything else. But isn't that strange that yeah. God, a few words caused countless heartaches, ruined Mary's health, took her into bankruptcy, and a uh, venomous old croc, who was a dear friend of mine, of course, on the side, uh, did all that. Had I said instead, do you follow baseball, none of us would be sitting here right now. Well, you maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm remembering? Yeah. I used to work for a furniture moving company in 1978, 79. And one time we got this job to move this giant fan to a photo shoot. The Ramones were there, Patti Smith, and you. And the thing that struck me about you was that you were wearing sneakers. I don't know why it threw me. Were they the same color? They were. You have no idea what you've just done. But you've flashed me back to my nightclub act. While I was writing for Carson, he let me moonlight. And I needed jokes, and I hit on the premise of a guy from Nebraska in the Ivy League. Mr. Groucho Marx saw me do some of these on the Griffin Show and said, I think you've hit a mother load with that premise of the yokel in the Ivy League. And the one joke I had was, I didn't know any Ivy League styles. In fact, freshman year, I embarrassed myself. I wore brown and white shoes. <laughs> and the white one kept getting dirty. 